the numbers are in, the ratings are in from uh, Sunday's, Sunday and Monday's, men, women's and men's national championship games, respectively. Um, and they are mind-blowing. They are mind-blowing. So it's one thing when it's like, okay, most watch women's basketball game ever or most watch sporting or among the most watched sporting events in the last year or whatever. Iowa, South Carolina checks in as the most watched basketball game in Love five it. years. Wow. Basketball game. Basketball. Not women, not men, not college, not Olympic. Basketball game, which means move over NBA, W, like basketball game of any kind. And for the first time, it outdrew the men's championship by more than 4 million viewers. Significantly. Yes, yeah, significantly. Like it wasn't, it wasn't close. It wasn't close. And so, I mean, this is, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Um, now, the growth for the women's game uh, is, is across the board. But specifically, I'm just speaking specifically to the record shattering telecasts. Wow. Look at this. That we've seen since last year's national title game. So we had last year's national title game was around 9.9. The rematch uh, broke that mark, which was like in the, in the 12s, I want to say 12 3 or something like that. Iowa UConn was at 14. Broke that mark. Right. Broke that mark. Right. It was all, all temporary. And, and here we are up over 18. The common denominator is Caitlin Clark in Iowa, specifically for these record setting telecasts. Ratings, again, are up in general, but I'm specifically talking about those telecasts because we're talking about this being the most watched basketball game in five years. Um, that's the common denominator here. She's not the only draw, but that's the common denominator. So I ask that to ask you, and I'll answer my own question before you do, if you don't mind. It's like, go ahead. Yeah. Is it is this temporary or is this the new normal blip or trend? I would lean more toward trend. And this is, again, why Dawn Staley was so classy and savvy for thanking Caitlin Clark, understanding that a rising tide floats all boats. Back in the day, you and I used to go to parties. Um, sometimes it's a party that everybody knows about and, it's, and, and everybody goes and it's the hot spot and, and, and don't, don't need to advertise. There's lines outside the door. Other times there's parties that like people have been talking about and telling you about like, yo, you need to fall through this spot. Like you need to go to the Lizard Lounge and hear this brother Michael Holly drop bars on the mic. Like you need to you need to come check this out. And then you get there and you're like, oh, snap. I've been missing out. This is like this is what people have been talking about and trying to get me to come to this here party. And mm. I think it, I think this is sustainable because and pe many people have pointed this out. There's so much more emotional investment uh, and so much more brand development that the women's game uh, no has, ha has, has produced right. because their players are staying longer. Um, but beyond that, it's like, okay, wh whatever brought you to this party, it's like, come for the storylines, come for the subplots, come for the drama, you know, come for the characters, come for the rivalries, but stay for the incredible basketball. And so the reason why they're, they're staying power when it comes to this, this trend, in my mind, is because even if you are a casual who came to this NCAA tournament and these, you know, Final Four games, or Elite Eight and Final Four games, for the Caitlin Clark phenomenon, how many more people did you meet at the party? How many more people did you get yeah. introduced to at this party yes. that yes. make you want to yes. stay and keep coming back for more and more? So um, I guess wow is all I got. I'll end it, I'll end it with that. Wow, but um, get, get used to it. I, I, I don't and, think it's a one-off. I don't think it's a one-off. And wow is a great place to pick it up. I'm overjoyed. I'm overjoyed for basketball fans. I'm specifically, I'm overjoyed for fans of women's basketball, for the players in that sport. Because the they've been telling us. That, 
that because the, media, right, the media that covers it. They've been saying, uh, the cover part, this, right. tell our stories. The coaches. Like, you know, shine a spotlight on this. This, pro- this product is great. Tell our stories. And that's what and finally mainstream media yeah, are doing. They said, tell our stories. They asked, they asked, tell our stories. But just in case you don't tell our stories, we're going to tell our own stories and we're going to celebrate. Even if, if you're not going to celebrate us, we're going to celebrate us. And so that's why we mentioned Don Staley. That is right on brand for who Don Staley is. And a lot of a lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of players and coaches are in women's basketball. Hey, we got this little, we got this, uh, we, we got this group together. We're going to celebrate each other. We're going to stand up for women, whether other people do it or not, whether other men or women, or, uh, men or women, women do it or not. We're going to do it for ourselves. And they've done that. And we're all late. Those who have come along going from 3.9 million to 19, nearly 19 million. A lot of those people are late, but a lot of them, and I, I want to celebrate them today. A lot of them have been there the entire time yeah. and have been saying, see, hey, this is a great product. And look, this is part of it is what women's <clears> basketball. <throat> it's not just the growth of the ratings. It's the growth of the game itself. And I'm not even talking about stylistically. I'm talking about programs around the country that have right. come up. I can tell you the this. parody. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about Iowa basketball in 2005 or 2010. I wasn't mm-hmm. thinking about South Carolina basketball in 2010 LSU LSU football, maybe not LSU yeah. women's basketball. And and so some of these programs have come in and introduced themselves because if you look at that chart, you see some familiar names in the early days when the yeah. ratings weren't that great. The product was but the ratings weren't we've Notre come a Dame, long way. We've come Notre a long Dame, way since UConn since Tennessee. UConn's dominance. Remember right. the question? Is UConn's dominance yeah. bad for women's basketball? We've come a long way from that conversation. And, uh, and they got and, characters. And characters, characters. That's the thing. Characters. I'm going to say the characters. Any, any TV show, any drama, any form of entertainment, you got to get invested in the characters. You got to get invested yeah. in the personalities and their individual growth and evolution. Absolutely. That's big. Nobody. Well, I, don't, I want to say nobody. I'm talking to much. a best selling author. But, you know about characters. But the characters, storylines, most people are not here for mm, the purity of the game. You're not here for that. <laughs> You're not here for that. Stop that. Right. You can go right. anywhere and get and get the purity. You can just like, I just want to go and see the beauty of the game. Yeah. And you want you want some storylines with it too. And so women's basketball has given us given us that, whether it was Caitlin versus Angel, Caitlin versus South Carolina, uh, Raven and the Revenge Tour. Whether it was Gino and Dawn and Kim Mulkey, all these characters in women's basketball and the set. Hey, they lost last year. South Carolina lost last year. They were taken out by Iowa. Now here they are uh, right. facing Iowa again, a chance to be undefeated. And they lost five players. They're starting five to the league. And now here they are starting over. I mean, so many good storylines for women's and basketball. With the, and with the characters comes coverage which with coverage comes critique yeah. with critique comes conversation with conversation comes controversy all of which contributes to the growth of the game it's all healthy all of it's great whether it's a bad call or frankly a bad article and hear me on this hear me on this when i say this two things can be true in this case you could have commentary that is problematic and offensive and yet good for the overall growth of the sport because because like you're saying it's not the the game itself is not always going to keep people invested it's sometimes it has to be the controversies sometimes it has to be the debates sometimes it has to be toxicity even believe it or not like all of those things like whether it's the nfl whether it's the nba the reason those are year-round sports is not always because of the sport itself so right. I'm not I'm, again. I am in no way uh, uh, condoning inappropriate language, but I'm saying the way or inappropriate coverage, but the way that the basketball community responded to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is 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 emblematic of the growth and the passion and the commitment and the dedication and the overall protection of this game. Am I making sense? 
Yeah, you are. You're making perfect sense. And I just want to, I want, I'm going to say one more thing. And I've, I've heard this a lot and I've heard it from some high profile people who think they're being complimentary. And I think we got to get beyond <coughs> this. You've heard it too, Mike. Wait, wait. When I say it, you're going to say, oh yeah, I've heard somebody say that. You know, it's like, okay. And they think they're saying something nice. Hey, women's basketball is great. I know the players in women's basketball. I'm not even paying attention to the men. I don't even know anybody in men's basketball. It doesn't, we don't have to do that. We don't have, we to, don't do have don't to, do to right. you don't have to bash men's right. basketball to celebrate to women's basketball, or you don't have right. to exaggerate it and say, of course, right. you know, of course, right. you know, some names in men's basketball. You do. And of right. course, they're playing good basketball, too. But right now, in this moment, in this moment, right. we're talking about women's basketball. It's a very compelling product with compelling right. storylines, which lead, that. as you yeah. say, to uh, which which leads to would lead to irresistible almost interactions yeah. that we're having. Like we could just right. go on and on about these stories and our opinions and hey, this perspective and that perspective, and it's all valid. And this product right. is inspiring all of it. Good or bad and, takes. And one more thing. Trending. Here's the other thing. They're on talk shows. Here's, go ahead. Here's the other thing. One more thing. This is the last thing I'm gonna say. Yeah, we got company um, waiting for us. I know we got company. I, I don't. I don't want to be rude. I'd like to see what this does for other sports, for other uh, other women's sports uh, in college basketball. Because talking to somebody yesterday, and they pointed out that the Frozen Four, basically the hockey hockey Final Four, mm. is happening. It's been televised for years and years. You know when the Frozen Four became consistently televised for women's hockey. 2021. It, it, three years ago, it just started getting the television coverage, and it's not the same coverage. The Women's mm -hmm. Frozen Four is, is being played at the University of New Hampshire's arena, which is a small arena. It, there's no, obviously, NHL franchise in New Hampshire. The men are playing in Minneapolis, uh, where the Minnesota Wild play. A nice uh, pro... NHL facility. Yeah. So there are still yeah. some inequities in other sports, and I want to see what this movement does for everybody else. I want to hear what Kurt Healing has to say uh, from Pro Basketball Talk, uh, our good buddy. We haven't talked to in a while, but like, let's stick with this theme. We're talking, we're just three basketball fans, and we're just talking, we're just talking ball. And Kurt, I know you were captivated by what you saw throughout the women's tournament. Like, what's your, what's your reaction to this, to this development? Uh, the first ever uh, instance of the women's tournament or the women's national championship game, I beg your pardon, outdrawing the men's national championship game and being, the, again, let me say it again, the most watched basketball game of any kind in five years. What say you? Well, you touched on part of it is the branding, right? Like, it's just because the women are staying there in college for four years and allowing you to invest in them, it, it hell it just gives you something that right now the college men's game doesn't have because if there's a Caitlin Clark in the men's game, she's on to the league, right? She's on and she's a one and done. The other thing they've got though is more stars coming up. Caitlin Clark moves on to Indiana. She'll be the number one pick in next week, actually. Then you still got Paige. It, you still got UConn. You still got a, a great stories and all those freshmen we just saw in South Carolina. We got Juju out in USC, who's great personality, great game, fun to watch. Like there's people ready to step up, and it feels like if this was college basketball's magic bird moment, women's college basketball magic bird moment that really took them to the mm -hmm. next level, they've got the up and coming Jordans in North right. Carolina. They got, they got, they got Isaiah. They, take it to that next spot. <laughs> they got Jordan. They, yeah, right. No, they yeah. got, they got, they got Dominique. They got other stars to carry right. that torch. No, absolutely. Hey, thank you for watching brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Now. Don't forget. You can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.